My name is Todd McLeod, and I'm recording a training on how to do web stuff. And the code that we're going to be working through is in GitHub goes to 11, and uh, go into my repository, and go to HTML, CSS, Bootcamp. So that's Todd McLeod goes to 11 on GitHub. And you can find all the videos by going to YouTube Greater Commons, and there's all the, there are all the videos. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Twitter. Todd McLeod, because I'm always tweeting awesome, amazing stuff and giving away cars and trips to Europe. It's killer. And uh, the last one is uh, check out our website that I'm building with some friends, greatercommons.com. It's going to be launching soon. It's awesome. All right, so first things, we are going to work through, oh, there's my calendar. Totally confidential. We're going to work through all this stuff right here. We're going to just do these together. So this is going to be a video where we just kind of show how to code some stuff up. So the first one is create an HTML page with an ordered list of 20 items. And uh, I'm going to start my editor. And then I'm going to add these. Help make Gogland share, don't share. Temp, and then just create spring 17. And then I'm going to do 009. 009 homework question. Cool, you're just heading out somewhere for a minute. And then we're going to create a new directory, and we'll call this one 01 uh, ordered list. And then I'm going to create an HTML page, so HTML file. Can you all see that okay? That's pretty good, right? Alex is like, I've had enough of this. I'm rocking out. And, uh, and there's my HTML page. So we want an ordered list with list items 20. And so that's the Emmet. If you've never seen Emmet before, you go to Emmet Cheat Sheet. Woo! And uh, here's all these things. Emmet's a you know, kind of like a plugin that you could add to your editors to help you write code more quickly. And you could do things like this. And so we need an ordered list of 20 list items. Use an ID to select the third list item. Set, style the third list item red. So there's that. And I want to add some content. So I'm just going to add some dollars here. And those dollars are like auto incrementers. And uh, there we go. And so we want to select this, this one and make it red. So the way that we are linking our CSS is with this, and we're just going to call it main CSS, and we'll create a CSS file. Main. And, uh, and then we're going to do it with an ID. And so I think the next one's going to build on this. So I'm just going to call it 02 and copy it at that place. But here, split vertically, and pop that over. And we want to select that third one with an ID. So the third one, ID. And what's a good name for this? You. What's your favorite band? Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath, I thought so. I only wear that hat every day. Black Sabbath. So uh, now we're going to target that ID. And uh, the ampersand, or no, sorry, the hashtag pound sign is how you say ID in CSS speak. And we want to make it red, color red. So that's our first one. Third one is red. And I might bump up the size of everything here by just saying, hey, HTML, and do font size, and maybe set it to 48 pixels, just to make it a little bit bigger. And then why is that jammed right against the wall there? Right? I want to bring that out. How would I bring that out off the wall? Yeah, so the box model, you have the content in the middle, and then you have the padding around it, and then you have the border, and then you have margins. And so we could adjust our padding, or we could adjust our margins. And so maybe on Black Sabbath or on OL, we could try this. OL, we could say margin, and uh, we could do top, and we could do right, and bottom, and left. Right? That would be one way we could do it. That's kind of cool. Or we could do top 30 pixels. Brought that down a little bit. Maybe bring this one over just a little bit more. And maybe bring this size down a little bit. And a little bit more large. Kind of cool. I love it! It's beautiful. So that's the first one. How many people... You got that totally on on ta on 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 whatever. The interesting thing about that is uh, 
is here. This is uh, why it's called cascading style sheets. The styles cascade down through the DOM, down through the DOM. And so let me just split these so we could see them side by side for a second again. And so the DOM is the document object model. How many people have heard DOM before, the DOM? How many people have never heard DOM? Cool. And so document object model, how many people could explain what that is? Okay, the easiest way to explain document object model is just to reverse it. It's a model of the objects on the document. <laughs> right? And so here is the document object model. And you get either, when you look for images, you get either Fast and Furious, DOM, or you get, there's a place in Italy called the DOM, I think, DOM Italy, Domo, something like that. So I think that might be the DOM, I don't know, in Italy. I didn't spell Italy correctly. But then here's also the document object model. And it is a model of the objects Let's do this one. It's a model of the objects in a document. And so a document is the way, the way your computer, the browser, is going to parse everything is it creates this hierarchy, this tree. But the document object model is a model of the objects on your document. So you have your document, and then you have your root element, which is the HTML element, and then you have the head element, and you have the body element. And inside the head element, you'll have things like title, and, it, and the title is going to have text, and text is a DOM, it's, a, it's an object, it's an object in the DOM. Text is a, an, an object too, and here text is my title. And then body is going to contain those, those objects, those elements in it. Okay, so it's the document object model. We call it cascading style sheet because the styles that I applied cascade down, kind of like water trickling down a fountain. Or kind of like, you know, those Chinese video, those... Japanese video games where you have all those balls kind of coming down around the pens. Have you guys seen those? Pachinko. Pachinko, is that what it's called? That's what I think of. But if I apply font size to HTML, then that's going to apply to everything else unless it's overwritten. And so here, you can see that. I apply font size to HTML, and then it kind of cascades down through the DOM, cascading style sheets, CSS. How many people, that was awesome. You just learned something totally cool. Nice. Cool. All right, so that's nice. We could use our homework to sort of uh, learn new concepts. All right, that's the first one. The next one is create an HTML page with an ordered list of 20 list items. Use a class to select the third, fourth, and fifth item. Style these items red. And so here is our, our 20 items. We want the third, fourth, and fifth. And so that's going to be this one. And I don't know if I could do, it's disappointing, I have to do it like this. Third, fourth, and fifth. And uh, somebody else give me the name of their favorite band. Foo. Fires. Whatever you want it to be. And so, you know, just for kicks, we'll do what we did before, HTML font size was 38 pixels and then ol uh, margin we had like top of like 30 pixels and then 0 0 and right of like 40 pixels and uh, and then for class we do the period Foo Fighters and so that says alright select anything that is class Foo Fighters and we're gonna make it red it's fun once you know how to speak the language it's like fun to like, oh, look at what we did. Yeah. It's so gratifying. I mean, it's like it's a little bit of a hurdle to kind of get some of this stuff. You've got your rule set. Here's our rule set, our CSS rule set. Uh, it is made up of a selector or selectors, and then it's followed by curly braces, which creates the declaration block. And then the declaration block is made up of declarations, and each declaration has a property and a value. Right? And then it ends with a semicolon. So it's, and then you know, learning what the different properties are and learning how to use the selectors. But once you start being able to do it, it's really gratifying to be like, oh, it changed three, four, and five to red. I think. 
Create an HTML page with two anchor tags providing links to different websites. Give one of the anchor tags the target attribute. Use an attribute selector to select the anchor tag with the target attribute. Style the selected anchor tag to have a border around it. How many people got that one? So we'll now do 03. So there we have Google and Greater Commons. And we could do HTML again. Font size of 38 pixels. And, uh, and we could do body. And I'm just going to put a little stuff in here, which is fun. Display flex. And we're going to learn about Flexbox later. But that just made body a flex container. And so everything which is now a child of body becomes a flex item. It doesn't go two levels deep, so if you know, so each of these anchor tags have a have a object, the text object. It's an object in the DOM, and it doesn't apply to that. It only applies to the anchor tag. So the body became a flex container. The anchor tags became flex items, and now I could use things like, and when you're first learning this, you'll want to go to CSS Tricks Flexbox, and they have a little bit of a guide. But when you have a flex container. Right? You can put properties on the parent or properties on the ch children. And so display flex makes it a flex container. But then I have flex direction and flex wrap. And so flex direction, I'm going to say which way do I want these to go. So flex direction column. Right? Which means take, take the children and put them into a column. Watch what happens. They were like this. Now they're like that. Took the children and put them into a column. Right? That's what I specified. And then flex wrap, I'll just say no wrap, that's, pretty, that's the default, I don't have to say that, but I can. And uh, so I did flex wrap, flex flows, a shorthand for flex direction and flex wrap. And then I have justify content and I have align items and align content. Okay, so justify content is going to work on the primary axes. And it's basically, you could put things at the beginning, at the end, or in the middle, or space them out, or space them around. On the primary axes, and then align items is going to work on the cross axes. What's the primary axes and what's the cross axes? If this is a column, is the primary axis going to be vertical or horizontal? Just your intuition, your guess. This is a column, so the primary axis is vertical or horizontal? Vertical, right? And so justify content works on the primary axes. And all I'm going to do is say center it. And this is going to center it across the primary axes. But before I do that, I want to say height of body is 100 viewport height. So viewport height is a measurement, which said you have 100 of them on any viewport. And I could say, hey, this element takes up this much of the viewport height. And so you could say 50. It take up 50 of, out of 100 of the viewport height. So I'm saying the body takes up 100 out of 100 of the viewport height, 100 VH. Make sense? There's also VW. Uh, viewport width. So there we have height is 100, display flex, flex direction column, no wrap, and justify content center. So it's going to take those and it's going to move them into the middle of the page. But what if I also want them over here? I can now do align items center, and align items works on the cross axes. Align always is the cross axes, justify content is always the primary axes. If I have a column, my primary axis is vertical, the cross axis is what? Horizontal. Horizontal. 
So line items is now working on the horizontal, the cross axes, and it's going to center things horizontally. Nice. Flexbox rules. So cool. So uh, the thing that we wanted to do now was we wanted to target something based upon an attribute selector. And so an attribute selector is like href, href, and I'm just going to copy this. And I might get this wrong. There's my attribute selector, color red. Let's just see what it does. Cool, selected it. And it, we wanted a border. We wanted a border all around it. So border, two pixels, solid red. I think that was what the... Create an HTML page with two anchor tags, providing links to different websites. Give one of the anchor tags the target attribute. Use an attribute selector to select the anchor tag with the target attribute. Uh, give one of the anchor tags a target attribute. Style the selected anchor tag to have a border around it. So we want a target attribute. So target on this one. Target blank. What's the difference between this one having target blank and this one not? What's the different functionality that we're going to get? Yeah, so target blank, watch this. I've got four tabs open. Boom, now I have five tabs open. Whoa, have I told you guys about this website? Greater Commons. Awesome. This one didn't open in a new tab because I didn't have target blank. And I could change this one, the attribute selector, because that's what the instructions were, to be target blank. And, uh, and now this will be the same. I'm refreshing with Command Shift R, and it's the exact same. That's pretty neat. Now, we learned a couple of deals the other day with CSS. Uh, about pseudo classes. First of all, you, you'll hear about pseudo classes and pseudo elements. And which one has one colon and which one has two colons? Pseudo classes have one colon and pseudo elements have two colons. So a pseudo element would have two colons, a pseudo class will have one colon, though often pseudo elements only have one colon. It's a semantic splitting hairs here, don't worry about it. But if we have an anchor tag, we could do hover, right? And we could do color green. And then what were the other ones? There's four. One was visited, right? And we could do color, I don't know, hot pink. And there's two more, one was active, right? And one was anybody remember? Huh? Visited active hover. Link. And there was supposed to be a certain order of them. Man, who could remember the order? So we gotta go look up our class notes. And then I'm going to teach you a little mnemonic device. What's a mnemonic device? An acronym or something to help you remember something. There we go. That's how you spell it. <laughs> I need a mnemonic device to remember what a mnemonic device is. Techniques a person can use to help them improve their ability to remember something. All right, so now we're looking for CSS and inline block uh, link. Here we go. Link visit hover active focus. Link visit hover active focus. So link visited hover active and focus. So we've got green, hot pink, uh, yellow, blue, and red. 
focus. Um, focus is like a form. So this isn't going to apply to, thank you. That's like if you've got, we did that with a form field, an input field. Yeah, remember that? Yeah. Or, um, yeah, just an input field. So if it has focus, we're just going to leave that one off. So how can we remember, how can we remember, because this order matters, link, visit, hover, active. Link, visit, hover, active. How can you remember that order? What's a mnemonic device that you can use? Huh? Wait, say it again. Link visited. What's high rule? That's the video game Zelda. Link visited high rule again. High rule's like working. Yeah, yeah. I it. It doesn't work. Yeah. If it works for you, that's awesome. I think love to laugh. Love ha. I love to laugh. Love ha. So link visited, hover active, L V H A. <laughs> but whatever works for you. Nobody left. Got a couple of smiles. So now when we uh, do this deal, all right, there's the hover. The link should be green. Right now it's hot pink because we visited it. What would happen if we created a new link to somewhere else? So that one hasn't been visited, so the link is green. Link, visited, hover, and active. Active is blue. Pretty cool. So I think this will be a good pause point. You guys watch me do some stuff. I want you all to uh, now recreate this page using Flexbox. So go to CSS Tricks, Flexbox. And if you need a picture of this page, come snap a picture with your phone. All right? So you can get, get that code right there because it's going to go away in a second. So I could do other stuff while you're working but recreate the page where you've centered everything perfectly in the center of the page. And the body is what does that. So I want you to practice using Flexbox and starting to move things around with Flexbox because Flexbox is flex awesome. Uh, yeah, just do CSS Tricks Flexbox. That's the best guide for referencing Flexbox. And remember that thing about justify content works on the primary axes, and align items works on the cross axes, and uh, flex direction sets which one is the primary axes. And right now, column, so vertical is primary axes. Did you have a border on that one link? On the target? Yeah. Yeah. They both are selected because they both have a target blank. 